Hello folks, I'm Frank, Frank Severely Normal, back for another Severely Normal video. Now, in this video, I want to explain to you that when I first discovered uh, what caused our debt in 2014, I was astounded because I was mentally ill and, I, and, and in these matters I was thinking along the lines of a 12 or a 14 year old. I didn't even, in that part of my brain, I didn't even realize that such greed existed in the world. <clears throat> and I had always voted PC and I, I looked up to politicians because my dad said the politicians were good because, I don't know, he voted PC. <clears throat> And, and, and I admired, like I said, Jim Prentice. I was astounded when he came down and blamed all of our province's problems on the citizenry. Because he, how, how would he know? He'd been, he'd been in the federal government for however many years, in the Harper government, and then he was up at the bank. He didn't even live with normal, ordinary Albertans. So anyway, as I was... As I was thinking about all this, I tried to contact people. I sent off a missive there to Lauren Gunter. I didn't get a reply. I sent one off to numerous, uh, numerous from bo both news. There's only two newspapers in Edmonton, two daily newspapers, and they're both owned by the same company. And if I go to Ottawa, I can read the same, the same commentators. <sighs> What a world we live in. Anyway, so, so I tried to get the attention of the newspapers. I even tried writing a few letters to the editor. They didn't get printed. But I, but I was realizing that this was a bigger thing than I could explain in little letters. But anyway, I did manage to talk to, on the phone, somebody else who was with the CTF. I believe her name is Paige, Paige McPherson, McPherson. Now Paige McPherson is the director of the Alberta ATA Fighting For You. Yes, yeah, she's fighting for you. No, she isn't. She's fighting to get her name and her face known, probably so that she can then become a columnist or a politician. Because the CTF, as I told you, is nothing but a but an incubator for politicians of the conservative brand as in Jason Canney, Derek Fildebrand, there's Paige McPherson, Candace Malcolm is a conservative writer of some repute. At any rate, the only I talked to Paige for about 37 seconds before she said and I had told her I've discovered a massive fraud da 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 and and what I heard was, oh, I'm very busy. I'll call you back. I have your number. I've got to go into this important meeting. Was that with the newspapers to get your picture taken, Paige? Because I haven't heard back from you. Now, <clears throat> you would think the Canadian Taxpayers Federation would be watching out for the taxpayer. But they're not watching out for the taxpayer. Just every now and then they come out with something and we all go, oh my God, really, look what they discovered. But nothing ever happens. It's just to get that person's face in the newspaper so they can become a politician later. Now, I had a newspaper person in my house. What was his name? Let me think now. Uh, Coleman. That's it, Coleman. I had to think camp so. Coleman Byfield. I believe Ted Byfield's grandson. He was in my house two basement holes ago for 45 minutes. Now, I didn't have a graph because Miss Notley hadn't given me that big inspiration yet. But I did have numbers all down, and I guess the numbers were just too big. And he said, thank you very much, and got out of my house and had nothing more to say, and I've never heard nothing from him. I had somebody else important down in my house. The PC candidate for where I was living. Now, where I was living <coughs> is the writing that Sarah Hoffman was was uh, running in. Now I happened to meet Sarah Hoffman across my fence one day as she was running to wherever she was running to and I didn't call her over. I knew who she was 
I didn't call her over because I'm not a NDP supporter and I'm not a socialist, but she came running over because the lady who lives upstairs had her face on signs in the yard where I was living. Well, I gave her about 40 seconds of my mind before she went scurrying away. And now she calls us sewer rats. <clears throat> I have tried in many ways to get what I know and what my intellect tells me is going on out to you, the public. But I have had a hard time doing that. I even had, the day I was rehearsing the Jim Prentice parodies, I even had a member of the school board. Now, I don't know which one. I'm not going to say which one because I don't want to identify this person. I had this person here as I was going to do those parodies, and I haven't seen this person since. But I did ask her a question. I asked her her income level. Now, her income level was right about here. Thirty to thirty-five thousand dollars. School board trustee. Fifteen thousand below the average income in Alberta, the median income, which actually I think it's fifty-two thousand. I think that's what Brian Jean told me when I was at his meet and greet the other day. He had to correct me, but I've just been using fifty thousand because it goes up, it goes down year by year. It hovers around fifty thousand right now. Thanks for the info, Brian. Anyway, thirty to thirty-five thousand as a school board trustee. Now, even though the median income is fifty thousand, the median income in the private sector is more like thirty-seven thousand five hundred. <laughs> About the same as a school board trustee. Now, there's a guy who got fired here. A couple guys who got fired by the. Notley government, and they made a big deal about it, about the guys' perks and the salaries and everything, and they were right, and they've reined in some of the board salaries. But this guy, Brad Clack, was getting, let me see, I can't go up that high, so I'll put it here, $670,000 a year. And a school board trustee was getting $35,000. Now, doing some quick math, this is almost 700000 So let's say that the school board trustee was getting the high end, $35,000. Well, it would take two of her to make 70000 So that means it would take 20, 20 school board trustees, just about, to make what one guy up here on one board I think he was getting paid for being on the board, and he was also getting paid for being the executive director of, of <clears throat> Agriculture Financial Services Corporation, a government agency. Now, the ABCs, the agencies, the boards, and the committees that the government has are massive and, and almost endless, and there's much more of them now, and there's much more of this since the Notleys came in, because, <coughs> because as I told you, <coughs> they're not here doing what they're doing for you, those less than, and including the rest of the middle class. They're building up a huge hierarchy to rule over us for now and into the future, and it doesn't matter which party's in power, that hierarchy will be there. I'm going to show you in the next video how I can tie in what the big business guys are doing through the legislation, the fact that they're not allowing us to to have a proper tax regimen which includes personal care taxes or provincial sales taxes, you can say it any way you want to, <clears throat> that includes personal care taxes and Alberta health care premiums on the higher income earners. Um,
I'm going to show you how that legislation that was set up and then the and then the power was pushed over so that Notley unexpectedly became our ruling tyrant but she is doing the dirty work she is installing all the carbon taxes carbon taxes on our goods and services do you understand that the Redford or as I like to call her now Alice in Orangeford started this off by installing the carbon taxes on big business and those costs were passed on to us the citizens and now the Notleys are finishing the job before handing <laughs> Because she knows she won't win another one, so she's going for it. I, I wouldn't doubt if we're 120 billion in the hole by the time she's gone. And then she'll be passing it back to the conservative cause. Only now the conservative cause is fighting. And now we have the central coming up. And gosh gee willikers, if it doesn't turn out that in 2009 we end up with a centrist government with a centrist government <clears throat> with Mr. Mandel in a very important position and wouldn't that be nice for Mr. Cates. Have a nice day Alberta.